What's going on everybody? In this video, I wanted to give you an update on Rivian. We do have some rumblings about a potential to get over their target or their revised target of 50,000 vehicles back towards 60,000. We're gonna go over that. It's kind of just an employee leak, it seems like. And then I also wanted to go over their recall here and what's going on there and then check out the chart for you. So let's get this video going. If you don't mind hitting the like, subscribe, ring the notification bell, helps me out a lot. And let's look at Rivian. And first off, this recall news. So Rivian recalls nearly 13,000 electric trucks and SUVs for a seatbelt fix. Now right off the bat, Rivian thinks that only 1% of this 12,716 affected cars can have the defective part, but it will inspect and if necessary, replace this sensor in any affected vehicles. So this does seem like it's something that can't just be fixed over the air and they will need to have a professional visually inspect this piece. And what it actually is, is it's this sensor within the seatbelt system that may be missized or dimensionally out of tolerance. And it could lead the system to believe that there is someone not in the front passenger seat causing the airbag not to go off there. So that's definitely a big issue, but it seems like it'll probably be a cheap fix and nothing to go crazy over, no reason to panic. And it seems like the market agrees. It is a slightly update today. The market somewhat is pretty mixed actually. And I wanted to quickly go over the chart and kind of just give you my thoughts on how I'm gonna build out my position. So this is gonna be over the next few months, just slowly but surely adding to Rivian and kind of get a good dollar cost average there. One thing to be aware of is this stock very recently created a new low. It's right around this $15 area. It did touch it about a month and a half before earnings. So they did miss some expectations. They also gave us a kind of a weak guidance and it did retest this $15 area, but it did bounce. So this area is gonna be an important support level and it is very possible that we test it especially if the overall market starts pulling back one thing to realize on this chart it is very bearish first off the fact that it just recently created new lows instead of creating new highs is bearish in and of itself and also we have the emas just unable to flip we get these short periods where a share price goes over the 50 tries to test the 100 but just can't stay above it and these emas have been nowhere near flipping each other in quite a long time so due to this bearishness on the chart the fact that it's been creating new lows uh, relatively recently the fact that the emas aren't trending up the fact that the share price has been you know in a downward trend i do think this is going to be a good dca you know over a good period of time just to slowly dollar cost average build it up to somewhere around three to five percent of my portfolio and go from there now i also did want to go over kind of a little bit of this article and how they kind of lower their guidance they did expect in 2023 to get to around 60,000 vehicles well in their earnings call they did lower that down to 50 but we do have these kind of rumblings from within the company that employees do expect that they might see 60,000 on the year let's look into it and Rivian did tell their employees this is kind of a leak but they told their employees that its production is expected to be 24 percent higher than the target of 50,000 vehicles that was announced on February 28th meaning that Rivian could produce nearly 62,000 vehicles this year which would be in line with Wall Street's pre expectations of around 60 to 62,000 vehicles but in their earnings call they did you know mention that they were gonna lower guidance one thing to be aware of is this could be the first decline in revenue quarter over quarter that we might see and supply chains continue to be a problem with stocks like Rivian with stocks like ChargePoint but in an emailed statement here Rivian did say that they're sticking to their official guidance of 50,000 and that the 62,000 number was actually taken out of context somehow I personally do think Rivian could be potentially sandbagging their numbers just so they can beat expectations and cause a nice rally. Because on this week guidance, uh, you know, you'll notice during the earnings call, they gave pretty poor guidance, you know, in terms of what was expected. The stock definitely dropped a bit, but it really didn't drop too crazily. And this may be a little strategy they're doing where they kind of under promise and over deliver and take advantage of the current fear in the market, get the bad news out of the way and actually surprise the market as we get towards the end of 2023 and the market potentially starts looking better. Meaning that any good news can be more well received and not just cause a little pop and then profit taking, which is what we've seen, you know, with any little short term rallies lately. Now at the end of this article, they do mention the first profit that Rivian should expect in 2020. Four, and I do suspect that they have plenty of cash to get to that point. We do have right around $13 billion in cash, a relatively small amount of debt. And when you look at their yearly net loss, 2022 saw a net loss of $6.75 billion. 2021 saw a net loss of $4.7 billion. And in 2023, they are expecting a loss of $4.3 billion. So just knowing that in 2023, they're expecting a loss somewhere around $4.3 billion, I do suspect they have plenty of cash to get all the way through to the end of 2024 without too much dilution, without having to take out a ton of debt at a high interest rate, meaning that I do suspect that they have a very good cash burn run rate to make it into 2024 when they are expecting profitability. And just imagine how companies like Rivian, ChargePoint, you know, companies like that will perform once we get through these supply chain issues. And also through this tough macro economy with 
higher and higher and higher interest rates. And right now it seems like there's no end in sight for the Fed and we might even see a higher federal fund target rate going towards as much as 6% instead of their previous target of five. It really depends on next CPI coming out and then we're gonna have our meeting towards the end of March, but it is very possible that we continue to see a handful of rate hikes. But just think that as we get towards the end of 2023, the Fed will likely be at least near the end and we should be seeing inflation coming down, but it's gonna have a hard time compounding on our already high inflation. I do think we're gonna start seeing year over year numbers actually coming down and that will give the Fed what they need to see to actually stop raising rates so much and potentially turn course possibly by the end of 2023 i do think this is still going to be a pretty rough year and it's going to be a great buying opportunity to buy some of your highest conviction stocks but let me know what you think about the year 2023 are we going to have a good year are we going to have a bad year is it going to at least end in a more positive note than where we're currently at and also how do you feel about rivian i personally think it'll be a great buying opportunity as we continue to face some issues with the supply chains and there are growing pains while ramping up supply chains will eventually ease rivian Rivian will continue to year by year produce more and more vehicles and get towards that profitability. And I will be continuing to take advantage of all this pain in the market. I'd rather buy at a steep discount than to buy while everything's euphoric and going higher and higher in price. But that's not how people see the stock market. And being a long-term investor, that's the best way to look at it. Of course, there's different strategies. If you're not as long-term, you know, you might want to be just going by the trend. If things look bearish, they might continue bearish for a while. But as a long-term investor, I will continue to take advantage of these deals. Thanks as always for watching guys, and I'll see you later.